first off, like I, I say it all the time when I come in here. Like, you know, I grew up in in Indiana, grew up in Indianapolis. And I've been watching Big Ten basketball for a long, long time, and uh, um, like, there's nobody that I have more respect for than Coach Izzo and, and his program, and like the standard bearer for our league based on all his accomplishments, what he's done consistently year in, year out, um, like to be able to like, there's almost times where you're like, you just look down there and I was like, man, that's Tom Izzo. And he's like, he's won more games than like, I don't know, me and probably 50 other people like me combined um, so like you know the, the greatest honor is is to compete and he said it before the game that like he's like you guys you know you're gonna get one of these I hope it's not tonight uh, but I, mean, I thought like our guys really competed and I'm happy for our guys like they they deserve this in terms of how they play and what they've done um, but like it, it's an honor for me to, to coach against Tom Izzo and like, like he gives a model for how we build our programs and what we do and how his teams get better and better and better as the year goes on and they stay consistent and guys get better and guys wait their turn and they come in and they're a good player and like it goes on and on and on and it runs itself and like that's who we want to be that's who we want to be and hopefully we're building that way for the future Yeah, that tech seemed like a long time coming. Uh, what did, what sort of set you off from that standpoint that finally put you over the edge? And how do you think your team responded to that sort of emotionally charged moment? Yeah, um, I don't know, it was like probably them playing a lot better. <laughs> Maybe it set me off a little bit. Um, you know, I thought our guys were competing. I, you know, I, I disagreed with the with the official and what he called, but. You know, at the end of the day, like, you know, he called the tech. It was over, like, right after that, right? And I went to him, and I was like, hey, man, sorry. Like, you know, it is what it is. And he said the same exact thing, and we kind of moved on from it. Um, but, like, immediately, like, you know, Miles came over and was like, hey, we got you, coach. We got you. And we had an older group on the, on the court at the time, and I thought they really responded. And... Um, like really played hard from that moment defensively. Like we really locked in in terms of what we needed to do. I thought our offense got better from that moment on. So I don't know. Maybe I'm a dummy for waiting this long to get one. Coach, I want to take you back off uh, what you said in your opening statement about Coach Gizzo. He sat down here just a couple minutes ago and was very complimentary of the program, very complimentary of you saying that you were certainly the right guy for this job. What is something like that him. Yeah, uh, like I said, he's like, you know, for us, it, it, there's a lot of really good coaches in in this league. Um, but like what he's done, like winning the national championships, going to the final fours, I mean, my numbers are crazy. I think like eight, maybe, final fours. Like we were in one, like 2010, Butler versus Michigan State in the semifinals in Indianapolis. And then like, the pros, like the guys that are in the NBA currently and before that, like um, that's a model for who we need to be and who we want to be. And like for him to say that is like it's it's an honor for me. Like I said, it's an honor for me to be down the sideline against him. Um, right? Like I was watching. This is this is, comes as a shock. I said it before. I, I watched the pregame shows and like. I was watching all the stuff. I'm like, man, he is about to tie Bob Knight for like uh, Big Ten wins for coaches. Like, that's so impressive. Uh, but that's longevity, man. That's that's winning year after year after year. And, and uh, if I can be half the coach he is, and um, I've had a successful career. Can you speak to the the job that John did? 16 rebounds against that team is 
you know, like 25 against a lot of teams and the, the and one, how big was that at that moment in the game when you guys had struggled in those spots? Yeah, John, John's a warrior, man. He's a warrior. He gives you everything he has. Like, there is no, like, did John play hard tonight? Yes, John plays hard. Like, I don't know, that's probably like a Twitter thing. I always see that. Did the Celtics win tonight? It's like, yes. Did John play hard? Well, of course John played hard. Um, he was in there battling by himself, right? We sent four guys back in transition. And John fought. You know, we could do that because it wasn't a fear of John not sprinting back on defense every single time. He was going to go as hard as possible to glass and run back as hard as he needs to. And, um, you know, I talk about those clips that we're going to show with John. This, these will be some of them, right? You can play this hard. Like, if this, if John can do it, anybody can do it, right, in terms of effort. That's all it is. It's pure effort, heart, determination, and love for Penn State. Like, he wants Penn State to do really well. And um, 16 points, 16 rebounds is really impressive. And they threw a bunch of guys, and they have a bunch of good players at the five, and they threw those guys all at him. And, um, you know, he just kept going and going and going. And, uh, you know, got to get him some rest. He's got to do it again on Thursday. Coach Drew, your team was down 14 at one point. What started the 8 0 run prior to your timeout? You know what? We, they came out um, They came out of the, the second half, like really determined, right? Like that's, that's one thing we talked about. You know, I, know, I didn't think halftime was probably going to be a picnic for them, right? But um, they came out on fire. Like we, we weren't great in terms of closing out and getting to their shooters. They got some offensive rebounds. They're attacking them. They're doing everything right. And, uh, you know, we were a little slow out of the gate. So, uh, once we got down, we've been down before. Um, and we've come back and we chipped away. But we do it, you know, we talk about doing it one possession at a time. Right? There's no 14-point shot. Um, you know, but everything gets magnified. I think every defensive possession gets magnified. Every offensive possession gets magnified. I think we finished with two turnovers in the second half, so we were maximizing the shots that we were going to get. Uh, and we just, you know, luck was with us. Uh, we made some. We made some tough shots. Uh, we made some timely shots and uh, you know, knocked in our free throws down the stretch. Michael, what changed with the turnovers in the second half? Great question. Um, you, know, you, you have, you know, once you insert Sam with Pickett, you, know, you have two guys, both ball handlers, like John is getting better and better in terms of how he's handling the ball. So now he's up there catching it and moving it and doing different things. So um, we were just sure handed in terms of what we wanted to do. And if you look at it throughout, I don't know, mostly throughout this year, we've turned the ball over, but like we shoot ourselves in the foot early. Uh, but as the game gets going, we get tighter and tighter, and we don't normally turn the ball over. Minnesota game uh, would be one of the exceptions where we turn it over late, but we usually don't late in the game. We just started a little bit earlier. I'm glad we did because we needed every single one of those possessions. Okay, you, you face this program, this Michigan State program, at a number of stops throughout throughout your tenure. I'm wondering what this Michigan State team maybe doesn't have that some of his best teams have and what sort of your scout on these guys? Yeah, they're, um, you know what, they, they got guys that they're a little bit, they're counting on younger guys to play kind of main roles for them, right? If you think about their group, um, like, you know, Hogarth Young, right? Um, Walker just got there, Max Christie. Malik Hall is still, you know, fairly young. He's he's a uh, Malik's a junior, right? And so, yeah. but like, they're usually a like seniors are carrying their group, uh, and that's what it is. And, and Bingham's had a good year for him, and he's and he's played well. I, I think Joey's done it at times, um, but like those guys are the ones that usually carry this team. Um, so. I think counting on these younger guys, I, I still think they're going to, like, they still have a lot of growth left in them, right? It's hard. It's hard to win on the road. Um, it's hard for young guys to play well on the road. I don't know why that is. Um, that's something that, like, if somebody ever figures that out and 
bottles that up. They would make a lot of money. Why people struggle on the road, why young people struggle on the road. So um, I, I just don't like, they do it. They, they can hurt you in a lot of different areas, um, but it's not consistent in that area, right? They don't have like one go-to guy that they go to. Like they need a bucket. They're doing this. They're running this play and they're going to this guy right here. I think there's a lot of different guys that can step up for him. A lot of guys that have stepped up for him at times, but it gets hard when you get a bunch of guys that, you know, based on the game, who do you go to at the end, right? And if you look in the past, like Cassius is getting those shots, right? Denzel's getting those shots. I don't know if they have that guy right now. They got a lot of guys that are capable. They got a lot of guys that, like, they're really good players that will probably be that for them here, but... Um, I think just the transition of not having seniors that they always count on to carry them, I think it's probably the difference right now. The last question. Back in East Lansing in December, I thought it was a similar type of game script. You guys were in in the first half, game started to slip away. It kind of felt that way now when you guys were down 14 with 13 to play. What has been the growth in this team since then? Um, that game was crazy because they scored more transition points than like we've scored all season <laughs> in one game, and it came in spurts. Um, we had to adjust what we did defensively, or in terms of on the offensive glass and on the defensive glass, where they couldn't get those. And now, like they're so potent in transition, you got to almost slow it to a crawl. And that's what we did, right? We, we made it a half-court game, and we made every possession be magnified. So, like, the eight turnovers for us, the 11 turnovers for them, like, in a game like this, like, add five more because that's what it usually is in a regular game. So, um, you know, we got the game how we wanted it. Uh, we, we tried to do some different things defensively. Like, nothing special, but I, I thought our guys, like, really competed, played hard on the glass. I thought we boxed them out as, as best we could and went after it. And uh, that's where they crushed us in game one, transition and rebounding. And uh, we've, like, that game, I, when I went back and watched it, I, it was so long ago. Um, so you, you see growth from kind of both teams. Uh, but I think our guys you know, played with the same spirit. And when they got down, when we got down, like we got tighter as a group, we came together as a group, and um, you know, that's kind of where you're seeing the growth in our team. Like when adversity hits, who are we? Who are we? And, and tonight we responded when adversity hit us. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.